Hi, my name is Ann Lane. I am the Collections Manager for the Mountain Heritage Center, a history museum of Western Carolina University. Today's demo will be how to make a custom-made box to fit a museum artifact. So I have chosen today this teapot made by Fredericksburg potter Phil Chapman. It's a nice simple artifact and this kind of box would serve to protect it not only from being rattled around when it's being transported or carried from the, gal uh, the uh, collection storage area to the gallery for an exhibit, but if it's kept in a box in storage, it's protected from dust, it's protected from pests, and the temperature and humidity are buffered by the fact that it's surrounded by layers of cardboard. Tools and materials. This is a piece of buffered archival quality cardboard, which we call blue board because it's blue. As you see, it's just like regular corrugated cardboard. It has a grain and it is suitable for holding almost any kind of material. For cutting and measuring, you need a corkback metal ruler. If you need to measure longer stuff, you can use this lovely yellow yardstick with big fat numbers on it. Uh, to measure your objects, you want to have something that's not going to scrape the object, so you use a tape measure, a flexible tape measure. Cutting is done with your classic snap blade knife. Some people use utility knives. Some people use exacto knives. They all work. For scoring to make your folds, a bone folder is a good idea, but almost anything that has sort of a smooth, somewhat blunt point will do. And then for doing your marking and sketching, you'll need a pencil and a piece of paper or a notebook. Lastly, you will need a glue gun. I've already measured the teapot. It's 10 inches high, 8 and 3 quarter inches wide, 7 and 1 8 inches deep. You have to add some space around your object for padding or mounting of any kind, so I generally add an inch to the height, which would make it 11. I add an inch to either side of the width, which makes it 10 and 3 quarters, and an inch to either side of the depth, which makes it 9 and 1 eighth. Then I make a sketch, and it doesn't have to be to scale, just sort of generally. That's going to be my 10 and 3 quarters. This will be my 9 and 1 eighth. Then I have to make the flaps. They'll be 11, 11, 11, and 11. So that's 11 and that's 11. Then all you do is you add this all together. So I have 11 plus 11, which is 22 plus 10 and 3 quarters, 32 and 3 quarters, 32 and 3 quarters. Then I have 11 plus 11 is 22, plus 9 would be 31 and 1 eighth. Now I'll be cutting out a square or a rectangle actually that has these dimensions, 32 and 3 quarters, Whoops, that'll be this way, 32 and 3 quarters times 31 and 1 eighth. Now I'm going to transfer my measurements to a drawing on the piece of cardboard. So I'm going to start here, make 11 inches for the flap, then the width of the thing is 10 and 3 quarters. So I'm just going to move this up and make it 20 and 3 quarters. There we go. And then the less would be another 11. So that will be the size. Okay. Always make two marks so that you can line up your ruler between the marks to make a straight line. Presumably straight anyway. And be sure the ruler doesn't move. Now I would not ordinarily be using a red sharpie for this. It's not exactly archival, but in order to make it clear to now we're going in the other direction. I'm going to have to 
find the center of this piece of board and measure out from either side. So the center is here. And we want this to be nine and one eighth. So that would be four and a half and one sixteenth. So that's one side. And then this is the other side. And there you have it. That is the drawing for the basic box. For each flap, you want to cut from the corner of the bottom of your box and out to the edge. This, by the way, is the bottom of your box. These are the sides, and these are the flaps, and they will have to be trimmed smaller. So I will proceed to cut the other three flaps. Now I'm going to trim the flaps to be narrower. And I'm just going to pick an arbitrary measurement. Two and a half inches be plenty wide. And again, you measure at both ends. Starting right there. It's easier to cut with the grain, which I'm doing now, which is why that last one went in one cut. Also, I've done a lot of this. So this is what your box will look like before it's scored and folded. So now I'm going to score where the sides of the box will be folded up. And since I'm, my score line is quite a bit bigger than my marker line, I'm going to put the ruler more to the left of the score line so that the fold comes exactly on it. And I do it fairly hard, but in little bits. When you go to fold this, it will fold very neatly. And you generally take it past the vertical so that you've got a good fold in there. The next step is to score the flaps, because what you're going to do is bring up the side and fold the flap around the other side of the box. So these scores I make a little outside the line. So I'm putting my ruler so that it completely hides the line, which will account for the thickness of the side of the box. And this is where the magic happens. Fold up this side, fold up this side, fold your flap, and there you have the beginnings of a box. OK. As you may see here, I've already folded up and glued one side of the box, and I have pre-folded the flaps so they don't get in the way. The next side I'm going to glue is this one. So I bring this over to this side, and I'm putting big blobs of glue quickly down the center. Because if you put little neat bits of glue They cool off and harden before you get a chance to do your folding. So that should hold now. Looks good. And turn the box back over. Next one we'll do is this one. So blobs. And that is box. And this is what goes in the box. And you notice it fits. The next step, of course, in making a box is making a lid that will fit on the box. You make the lid in exactly the same way as you make the box itself. You start out with measurements. 
and you measure at the top here and this is 11 and about an eighth inches you add a little bit maybe a fat eighth to a quarter to either end of that measurement so I would call this probably 11 and 3 eighths you do the same thing going the other way measure it it's about nine and a quarter so nine and a half would be so it's 11 and 3 eighths by nine and one half then you decide how deep you want your box lid to be it doesn't have to be real deep um, I think three and a half inches is probably plenty for this so you make your calculations the same way you draw the bottom of your box you put in your measurements you draw the flaps of your lid you cut it out you score it you put it together and when you glue it fit it on the box itself while you're doing the gluing because if you have missed your measurements a little bit you may find out that what you've made is a really nice artifact carrying tray instead of a lid that will fit over the box thank you for watching today's instructional video on the making of a basic box to house museum artifacts again um, I am Ann Lane, Collections Manager at the Mountain Heritage Center at Western Carolina University. Please check out this video and others as they appear on our YouTube channel. Uh, you may also, if you would like, call the museum or send us an email if you have any questions about your own treasures. Thank you.